My name is George Iceman Gervin. Uh, this is Dylan Brooks. What's up? This is Vince Carter. You're listening to the Three Point Conversion. Check it out. For Caitlin and Aaliyah, in what ways do you feel like this team has grown since the early weeks of the season? What what ways have you improved? Um, I think just being able to have some more practice time and really get to play and get a feel for each other. I think we've just been playing a lot better team basketball. Um, everyone's getting their touches. Everyone's knocking down their shots. Um, and so I think it's just been really great. And also I think our defensive intensity um, has been a focus for us and we're able to use that to spark our offense. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. For uh, Caitlin, so 18 points and 12 rebounds, mm -hmm. right? Have you um, ever, well, I'm sure you probably had that many rebounds before, but maybe yeah. not? Have yeah. You? I had, in college, I would get them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what, how meaningful is that to you uh, that the double double is points yeah. and rebounds? Yeah, I mean, I think I got off to a fast start there in the first quarter. Sometimes the ball just bounces your way a little bit more. Um, and a lot of the times the people I'm guarding are getting back in defense. So I have a little more free reign of like going and chasing down the ball while our bigs are probably boxing out and hitting a little bit more. So, you know, we credit sure to them. Are. We um, sure are hitting a lot more. Sorry, my bad. No, um, but no, I mean, I, I, I think we're really good when I can get it off the rim and push in transition. So I take a lot of pride in trying to chase it down off the rim and then really go and I think that led to a lot of easy baskets for Aaliyah at the beginning of the game or just all of us in transition. Like, um, you know, I think that's it's a really good thing. But, yeah, 12 is, you know, don't get used to it. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, for, for any of you, um, that's three close wins in front of, you know, three good home crowds. I guess how much energy or juice does it give you to have all those thousands of fans um, when crunch time comes? Yeah, it's great. I mean, we feel the energy. Um, we use that to our advantage. Um, they're cheering super loud. Um, and so we're just thankful that they continue to show up and that they're super loud because, I mean, we're, we're playing hard for them, too. This is for all three of you, but three straight wins at home every four. 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 Well, in this home stand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. So three get straight that number wins. Be more specific then. <laughs> How does that help your confidence going into the upcoming road games that you guys have? And what stands out to you about this stretch at home? Mm. Uh, I think that us, for one, being able to perform to a point where we win games in front of you guys is always a plus. Mm -hmm. So we never want to let you down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think me individually or us as a group want to, you know, see you guys look in the crowd and we just, y'all got long faces. So we take pride in wanting to win a game, obviously. We take pride in our city and, you know, and the people that's representing us. Um, so I think it, it fuels us, you know, it, it kind of give us a pick me up um, or whatever we need as a group. Um, I do think this energy is important going on this stretch because um, down the stretch of these games, it's going to get mucky, it's going to get ugly. And I think if we can handle adversity and or, you know, be a part of or deal with any crowd that comes our way, I think down the stretch of games when it gets really competitive and gritty, we we come out with the win still. So I think it'll be a learning experience, um, but I think we could fuel it. Yeah, I would agree. I think, you know, these were important games and I'm proud of us. I felt like we took it one game at a time. We never looked too far ahead. And I think that's the same thing with this next stretch of five, five straight row games. You just got to go one game at a time. and the next two are versus teams that we played in the last week. So they're certainly going to want some revenge. But also, um, you know, I feel like the confidence that we've been able to build from the last three games is, you know, continue to take a step forward and, and learn each game. And, you know, if we if we do happen to lose one, how are we going to respond? Um, I think that's been a big thing for us, too. The last game we lost, we found a way to respond and, you know, string off three straight wins. So I think we've gotten a lot better over the course of these last three games, and it's just continuing to build on that. Aaliyah, uh, during this homestand, it seems like you and Caitlin have found a lot of chemistry in the pick and roll game. Mm -hmm. How much does that help you guys offensively to have kind of an action that you guys feel you can get to and get a good shot from? Yeah, great. Um, I think Caitlin does a great job of finding me um, and also understanding when she can get her shot out of the pick and roll as well. I think that's something that we've just continued to build over um, games and practices and just continue to get a feel for each other. And so I'm super excited of where it's at now. But also I think a big part of that is Caitlin with the ball in her hand. She talks to me a lot and she tells me do this or do that. And so I'm just trying to make sure I get to those spots because I know she can hit me. Mm. 
Aaliyah, you, you've played with Kelsey now for two years. I think today she, she made her first five, maybe even first six shots. Just, just what does it do for your team when she comes out and, and is firing on all cylinders? I mean, just continues to amp us up, really. I mean, Kelsey can score the ball. It's hard for people to stay in front of her because of her speed, and so she just blows by people, and we, we love that. Like, that is great energy for us because we know that one thing, we give Kelsey that ball, and she's going to go and won't be stopped. Thank you, Sophie. Damon. Kelsey, the three of you up there combined 62 tonight and 11, 11, 12 shots for the trio. What's gelling for you three and including Alyssa, especially these last two games as we've seen you all play well together? Uh, two things. I think chemistry and experience. Um, I think um, we, we have a relatively young group and you need experience in this league to kind of figure out where your team is. And I think we've already kind of seen our law and what it looks like. And I think it kind of just took us up a, a couple notches, which is a great thing. Um, and then individually and personnel wise, you got to know your team. Um, you gotta know the people you're playing with. You know, you gotta know what spots they like. You gotta know how you gotta pass it. You gotta know where they're most comfortable, where they're uncomfortable. Like all that stuff matters. And I think we we are starting to master how to play with each other. And I think that once we kind of seal the deal with that one, it it'll be hard for for people to stop us because I think we could all fire our own mm -hmm. cylinders um, together. Um, I think everybody can eat. So. Three, for all three of you, you know, national narratives are interesting and maybe not even accurate. Uh, but the narrative early on was you're struggling, you're losing, um, you know, it's a bad team, whatever. I'm sure you heard it, you saw it, or you tried to avoid it. So what's the narrative now? What's the story of the fever now? I mean, if season ends today, you're in the playoffs. What's, what's the story that America should be paying attention to now, all three of you, if you could answer? Thank you. Honestly, my opinion with that is I let people keep their narratives. Whatever they want to say is what they want to say, because I feel like we have this group right here of 12 that we know what we're working towards. We know how we come in every single day. And if they want to change their narrative, that's cool for them. But we're going to be rocking with our 12. Hmm. What she said. <laughs> I think everybody just loves instant satisfaction in our world. Sure. Like no one came in here and said we were going to be WNBA champions from day one and let in our locker room. Like that was never our goal. Our goal is to get back to the playoffs and we're fighting for that every single night. Like this is the first time we've won four home games in a row since 2015. Like you have to have perspective on things and that goes for life too. like have perspective on life. And there just needs to be solid perspective on what this team can accomplish. And I think everybody in our locker room had that and, Nobody ever hung our heads. We had the hardest schedule to start. Um, we didn't get to practice much, and we're playing with the most inexperienced team in the WNBA. So, um, I mean, I think it's just this group is, you know, starting to click and build some chemistry, and it's one day at a time. But, um, like I said, everybody loves instant satisfaction. But, sure, we would have probably loved that too. But I think we all kept good perspective on knowing we just need to get better at one step at a time, and that's what we're going to continue to do, even though we've won, you know, three in a row at home here. Yeah, Caitlin, really efficient first half for you. Some more off-target passes mm -hmm. uh, in the second half, I guess. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you go about smoothing mm -hmm. that out as games progress? Yeah, I mean, there was a couple here and there. I think one was a set design where I kind of just assumed the Leo was going to be open, and I didn't even really look before I threw it. So I think just slowing down a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm trying to remember the other ones. One, it's another okay. one was to Aaliyah. It's that was soaring out right. of bounds. It's all right. It's all right. Don't worry. Because it was <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Because, I mean, you, you look at Caitlin and you look at the way she passes the ball. And so sometimes things are going to happen that way. And that's okay because we're not going to let her hang her head. We're not going to hang our head off of any missed passes because we're still continuing to gel together. And we know that she's a great passer. And so if she thinks she can get that ball there, she's going to throw it. And if, if I miss it, then it's we're, we're good. We're all right. Don't worry. We're good. <laughs> Come here. Thanks, A.B. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Aaliyah, Gidden, we haven't asked you about being named Eastern Conference Player of the Week, especially given mm -hmm. what you went through the first couple of weeks. Yeah, thanks. You, is this a little bit more fruitful, a little thanks. bit more meaningful to you? Yeah, it was It was nice. I'm, I'm really glad. Um, I mean, I'm glad my teammates have just continued to put me in those positions. Thank God that I was able to be awarded that, but I mean, it's, a, it's special for me. Kelsey, as a team, what are you most proud of about what's clicking, about what's rolling right now for this group? Uh, I would say that our, our, I think our, huh, our attitude on like keeping what don't matter out. Um, I would say I'm most proud of our group for that. Um, I think right now we keeping it, keeping the basketball and we keeping the main thing the main thing, and that's the X's and O's in our group. Um, I don't think that we focus on what the world could be saying, and I think that's the best part for us right now. So I think that's our biggest growth for our biggest jump as a group, coaches included. Yeah, for Kelsey, obviously, um, last time you guys won four home games in a row was 2015. That was still 
three years before you as the yeah, longest tenured college player college. got here. <laughs> Just what's different about yeah, this year's solid. team like, compared to all the other? I, like, I, uh, like I think, I, I mean, obviously the change in era or the change in like. I was a freshman, I think. <laughs> I think I think obviously just you know these guys um, coming in kind of changing the narrative for the game in general for the women's basketball side of things, um, but I think collectively um, us taking the time to build what, or, what, or the organization and what it could be you know Tamika catches in that era was what it was and I think that we're trying to do something different and establish something different so um, I think that's the biggest difference. Go the last two on Zoom, uh, DJ, you want to start? Hey, questions for, I have two questions. Questions for all three of you. All three of you made threes in this game. I wanted to know one, how do you feel about the spacing when all, all of you are shooting well from distance? And then the other questions for Caitlin, you had a, a three pointer off of a down screen in the fourth quarter near clutch time. And I wanted to ask are you more comfortable on ball or off ball in those situations. Um, I mean, I would say our spacing has definitely improved over the course of um, the last probably couple of weeks. Honestly, I think we kind of struggled at the beginning of the year. And then, to be honest, it I think it was a bit of a broken play. We were running a set, and I kind of just ran in a circle and then kind of came off of a down screen because I knew I was supposed to come, in a down, come off a down screen at some point. And sometimes it works best when you fake yourself out because then it really fakes the defense out. <laughs> and it worked, and I got op the most open I had been all night. So, um, honestly, like... I prefer to shoot off the dribble. I think everybody knows that. Um, but I think my, you know, catch and shoot shooting and coming off screen shooting has definitely improved over the course of the last two years for sure. Maybe Kels, anything on spacing? Yeah, I think our spacing has definitely improved, like Caitlin said. But I think a big part of that too um, is that they have to chase so many people. They have chased Kelsey. They have to chase Caitlin, and so they are more focused on them. And then sometimes we're able to just pop back and knock it down. Last one on Zoom, uh, Mike Vopel. Yeah, Aaliyah, I think you have you have four threes already this year, which is many last year. I just wondered, obviously you're you you battle so much down low, but when do you sort of um decide to to look for that three and how is how have you worked on that to make that a part of your game? Yeah, I mean shooting three is something I worked on in the off season, but it's also something that I continue to do in practice and just knock it down and we do a lot of drills where we're shooting threes. And so I mean I'm pretty confident. I don't just start out there. Obviously I wanna bang and get down low and then sometimes when I have the opportunity I'll just step back and take it. All Thank right. you. Step back. Thank you everybody. Oh, no, we'll no, bring no, coach no, in just... next. So, Coach, the national narrative has been, you know, Fever's terrible, Caitlin's terrible, you know, the last you know, beginning. Co coach is terrible. Coach, coach yeah, is terrible. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's yeah. add that. My journalists are terrible. I, yeah, whatever. Um, clearly, that narrative is wrong. Um, you guys, if the season ended today, you're in the playoffs. I think you would have been the last game, too. Um, schedule's easier. But what what is... Um, what has been wrong about the narrative and now what is right as you guys are starting to actually uh, win games and, and show everyone what you can do? Yeah. Well, we can start with the schedule for this inexperienced team, right? You know, youngest, youngest, least experienced team in the league. That, we'll start there. That schedule was tough with no practice time. And that is where young players, you know, need to play together, get, you know, get time on the court together, understand each other's timing where they're going to be so between not being able to practice playing the toughest teams in the league <laughs> in the league every other night <clears throat> you know i keep saying it but just the way you know just the way these guys keep showing up i'm so proud of them because now they're getting you know they're feeling what it what it should have felt like from you know at the beginning for them um just really proud of them um fourth win you know home win in a row, which is really, really exciting for the Fever. Scott, go ahead. To that point, Kelsey said the thing she's most proud of is how they've kept everything inside, how they've blocked out the noise. How do you feel you guys have, how do you feel like that has been successful? You know, that's really hard to do. And that is, uh, it's taken a toll on them, um, on all of us, you know, and we're just in a whole different world right now in women's basketball. Not one that we've never experienced before. So we're in this learning curve of trying to figure this all out. And we were trying to do it early against the toughest teams. Now we've had time to practice. Now we've had time to jail. Now we've had time to, to get some minutes together um, <clears throat> and just build confidence. That's another one. Like we just weren't able to build confidence. And that changes you. You know, that changes everything when players are able to, to build confidence. And I think Ryan told me on the way here, our six wins, we, we've had four players in double digits scoring. I mean, that, that's, 
That's what we can do when we have time to put it together. Go Bob, then we'll go Matt. Christy, now that the schedule is humane, <laughs> what, <Love> that word. <laughs> what, feel free to use it. Yeah. Uh, well, what has changed, and, and do you see specific instances on the court where you see where you see the learning curve coming along, where you see people starting to understand what they're doing? Yeah, for me, it's the timing of um, mostly the passes into the post. You know, we've been really going into Alyssa and AB, um, really working on some hollow action with those two. Um, I really think, you know, that's just a timing thing. And, and for me, that's, we're getting better and we're able to work on that um, at practice. Um, so that to me is the timing of where we are, the timing of sealing those defenders, the when to step across, when the reverse action has happened, when AB is going to step across, how we're going to reverse to the third side to get the ball in to whoever that is. It's just timing. And that just takes obvious, you know, time together, you know. Go Matt, then we'll go Tony. I guess, how impactful is it for a younger team to go perfect on the homestand leading into a five-game road trip? Yeah, you know, these um, just to get these wins at home, you know, the fans have been showing up, the sellout crowds, just to be able to put, you know, a product out on the floor that they're proud of. I mean, we can't thank them enough for coming out. The fans have been incredible. Um, but, yeah, just to have these wins and then now to go back on the road, um, against Atlanta, against Chicago, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, they've all been closed games, so they're you know they're going to come at us with everything. Um, we just got to stick do it, stick to doing what we are doing, um, staying together, um, just keep improving every time we can step on the floor. Whether that's a practice session, whether that's a video session, or in the forty minute game, that's what I told them today. Like, we can't think about what's coming up. Like this is. This is, we've got to get better in these 40 minutes. Tony and Zion. Christy, this is the second game in a row that all four of Melissa, Kelsey, Aaliyah, and Caitlin have all been effective and had similar shot totals. What to you has allowed that, that quartet to gel and play better these last two? I think a, a lot has to do with just understanding, you know, when we're, when we're playing in that fast pace. You know, like if you have the advantage, three on two, two on one, like you keep that advantage and you keep attacking. We're really learning that when we're, now we're back five on five. We've lost that advantage. Now we've got to execute. So now we're able, and we're doing a much better job executing. We're doing a much better job of executing ATOs, um, baseline out of bounds, sideline of bounds. But that's just that practice time, being able to work on it. Sign, go ahead. Chrissy, when, when Caitlin was in here, she talked about how, like, you know, your goal was never to, to win the whole championship. You just guys wanted to just make the playoffs and be in a spot to do that. I guess, how have you been able to keep this team grounded through the, the slower start you had and, and get to a point where you're competing? Yeah, just, you know, it was it was a challenge for them, you know, just to show up every day, not having success, going one and eight, you know, just, just that's really hard to do to keep coming back and just beg, you know, asking them to just stick with it. We're, you know, let's just keep getting better, keep getting better, keep improving. And to me, that's, that is what I am the most proud of is they kept showing up and we just keep, we just keep improving in certain areas that we're focused on, that we're emphasizing. Go Reggie here on the right. Sure. Coach, I don't know if you've been asked this, <laughs> I haven't heard you talk about it at all, but you've been asked about a lot about what you've done to help keep the players' confidence up, but what have they done to help your confidence up and what's different about this team now going into the upcoming road stretch that wasn't there before? Um, you know, it's funny <clears throat> when we, when we were having that hard stretch and it was, uh, some really hard, tough times, you know, you, as a leader, um, you don't have a break. And so you just have, you know, I've got great people around me, great assistant coaches, um, a great trainer and Todd, who's been doing this for a long time. And he is always really quick to send me a text that's unexpected. That just kind of gets me back grounded, lead us coach, like we're ready, tell us what to do. Um, you know, players have a way of knowing you're down and just walk by you on the bus and hit you on the back. I know it's small things, but coming from players, those are huge. And when they do do those things, I make sure that, you know, I find a way to thank them for that, you know, in the next few days. Cause they just, you know, they're grinding too. Um, but again, I've got a great support staff and assistant coaches and, and, um, so I'm really lucky for that. 
got two on Zoom. Uh, Taco, you want to start? Thanks, Ryan. Hi, Christy. Christy, tonight your um, seventy four percent of your shots either came at the rim or along the three point line, and you're leading the league on a per game basis for those shots. What is it about those specific looks that you think really helps your team and enables your offense to be as good as it's been over the last few games? You know, <clears throat> we just we just really keep talking about paint touches. You got to get paint touches. You know, we've got players around now that are able to knock down wide open shots. So if you get your feet in the paint, if you get a paint touch, it just collapses the defense, especially the way AB and Liss are playing down there. So as you know, you've got to play through your post and I'm not, that's not saying you just, you know, feed it in expecting them to get every shot. They just create wide open looks. And then you have a Caitlin and a Kelsey who are able to also bring on so much attention. Both of them take on so much attention. Caitlin is able to knock down wide open shots. Kelsey Mitchell is able to get downhill extremely well. When she gets downhill, what happens? The defense collapses. She's finding wide open shooters and we're knocking them down. So that is the way we have to play for us to be successful, for us to have four players in double digits where the, you know, the points are spread, the attempts are spread across the board. Um, just keep knocking down those high percentage shots. Got the last one, uh, Willie. Thank you. Hey, Christy, uh, to sort of go back to that very first question with those negative narratives, somebody who, you know, sort of flew under the radar with negative narratives and she sort of was very patient and poised was AB. You just touched upon it. And it's no coincidence that during this winning stretch, her offensive production is picked up as well. For a second year player, she's come across, whether it's in press conferences, on the court, uh, sort of being a right arm to Caitlin. Can you just talk about her maturity level and her poise? And just her overall persona, because it, it, it's, it's just very impressive, and, you know, because she, she caught a lot of flack early this season also. Yeah, you know, A.B., I, I, you know, I say it, she's, she's so extremely hard on herself. And when she wasn't playing well, she really, you know, she just was more concerned of letting, you know, she was letting the team down. <clears throat> and so, you know, she just got in the gym. Um, she got with Jared. Um, he's, he's her coach. And, you know, they just went to work. And then the more we played, you know, she was, you know, she started under, you know, figuring out the timing of things, her and Caitlin, the timing with her and Caitlin, um, you know, the, the, the reds, the traps that were happening with Caitlin, she was able to, to roll to the right areas um, to get those touches where she was making the decision, whether she was attacking or she was kicking. Um, but AB just got confidence. She got confidence after the Connecticut game. She went into business mode. And she's just been, you know, business-like and doing what, what this team needs. Um, she's been a focal point. She's knocking down shots. She's shooting a high percentage. Um, she ended up with 22, I think, tonight. I think she didn't end up with that double-double, but eight rebounds. I mean, I'll, I'll take that every night. Really proud of, you know, just her and the, the leadership that she's bringing for our team. All right. Thank, Thank you, everybody. you. Thank you, guys.